My name is Jordan Thiswood. Thank you for joining us. Uh, one thing that's really exciting about coming to Montreal is just how much activity is really taking place here. So just a few quick stats that the team uh, pulled up. So 40 plus visual effects and animation studios, 3,000 people or more working in the industry and combined 21,634 shots produced in Montreal. Like, wow, guys, amazing. And it's only getting bigger. There's more companies coming here. So uh, we don't see it from our perspective slowing down anytime soon, uh, which just means that it's a great place for, to be. We have people here in Quebec. We also plan to also be coming by more often to see you guys. So please make sure you, you know, come up and say hi afterwards and make sure that we know who you are. So uh, a lot of you have worked on shows that are nominated for the Oscars that are up this weekend. And uh, so congratulations to you. And uh, we're really excited that Nuke got the SciTech Award this year and uh, that we'll keep on sort of building tools that will hopefully garner more SciTech Awards because they honestly do things that help you guys. That's the only reason that you get a, uh, an award like that. So for tonight, uh, it's going to be myself uh, giving you the quick introduction to Katana 3 and the work that the team has been doing in London for about the last year. Brian Fukushima will give you some TD tips and tricks, cool things that can be done with Katana. Uh, that sort of uh, give you insight into how it can be customized. Aguilles, uh, will from uh, 3 Light, the CTO, will give you a great rundown on their new NSI-based uh, renderer that will now ship with Katana. Uh, so please you know, give him your best attention. And then uh, Mathieu will come up with me and we'll talk about uh, Project Lara and give you a sneak peek at actually using Katana there. And then Peter Novs from uh, Rodeo will finish off the evening with his presentation. Okay, so first off, Katana 3. How many people here sit day in, day out with it? Oh, come on, I may be blind from the lights, but I, you know, I'm sure there's more of you. Uh, <clears throat> so anyways, it's my great pleasure to tell you about what we've been up to. Uh, so, you know, as it says, 2018 is gonna be a fantastic year uh, for Katana. To give you an idea now, the Katana team is the second largest engineering team at Foundry only uh, surpassed by Nuke. Uh, we've doubled in size over uh, the last couple of years and with a lot of the work that we're actually uh, putting in and with that uh, expanded team, it means that you'll see a very accelerated uh, pace of development compared to what some of you who have been uh, in the Katana community for a longer period of time have ever experienced. So we've got a few development themes that we've kept through uh, our work on Katana 3. So overall performance, the user experience, and integrated rendering, uh, each of them has sort of different reasons for, for being. Obviously, everybody loves a fast tool, so performance is definitely there. User experience really comes down to this. Katana has a great architecture. It can do incredible things. Uh, but the next wave of development beyond making it faster is about making it easier to use so that you guys can do better artwork with it. You know, taking that layer of technical off the sort of the front veneer and putting more of a you know artist front end to it uh, but not pulling away from what makes Katana great. The integrated rendering just gives you options. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've seen through the industry is that depending on the studio, depending on the pipeline, depending on the rendering plugin, uh, people have had different Katanas that they've experienced. So we wanted to make sure that there was one ground truth for all the things that were possible with Katana. The three delight guys have done a fantastic job with that, and that's why they've, uh, they've sort of paired up with us and you'll be seeing more of it. So overall performance is an ongoing project. Uh, we're not going to stop uh, until, you know, basically there's nothing left to do. And right now we've reached a point where Katana 3 will ship where loading uh, the project, the, file, the uh, system itself, loading projects, and many actions within will be one and a half times faster. So to give you guys an idea, if you don't already know it, uh, Katana was split at 1.6 into a UI thread and into a scene graph processing thread. Uh, there was a missed opportunity to make it fully multi-threaded at the engine level, and that is a lot of the work that the team is doing right now. Uh, we've got multiple developers that are working on that, and it looks incredibly uh, um, promising and you think that is going to really carry through. But what have they been doing, though? So things like cell performance, the display driver performance, and the underlying architecture with GeoLib and everything, they've been going through and knocking down all the things that, if we just jumped straight, uh, straight to multi-threading, 
that would actually be masked and would have been a lost opportunity. So things like uh, getting the new viewer in, which we'll talk about in a minute, show that we had other parts of the UI that were actual bottlenecks. So the actual engine to Katana is 10 times faster than what you experienced because of some of the UI bottlenecks. We're gonna rip that out and make sure that that you know, performance is right in front of your hands. Okay, but like I said, the ongoing, the end goal, and we really want to achieve it this year, and you know, we'll keep you guys posted on how we're doing, is to be fully multi-threaded so that you know, it feels like grease lightning. Now, when we talk about user experience, we really kind of split this into two things. Uh, well, I you know, sort of will talk about the overall UI and, and then also uh, the viewer work. So this is the Katana that you probably all know and love. You probably have a different layout because the one that it ships with is not you know, the one that uh, probably most people use. But you can see it's, you know, it's, it's functional. Um, you know, the styling of the UI doesn't lend itself to uh, you know, sort of an optimal visual fatigue level. So we've gone through uh, with UX designers. This is a big thing at Foundry these days. Uh, we've been making great technology, uh, but we put a renewed interest into making, working with UX designers to make sure that all our tools um, get shaped up. And this is just a sort of quick mock-up that one of our designers did for us. And this is where we ended up. Okay, so you look at the old, look at the new. You can see that it, the display of information is cleaner, easier to read. Uh, contrast levels, the gray, the neutrality is still there. When you look at the viewer, you can see that it's you know got more of a DCC feel to it. And then there's a lot of little things, but one of the little things to point out though is things like adding in the actual uh, attribute uh, type uh, and name hints. So all these little things that just slow you down because you bog, you know bang your head against them you know a hundred uh, times a day, you know a thousand times a week. Those are all the things that we're scratching away and just trying to scrape off the, the product and give you guys a cleaner experience. So like the uh, UI or the performance, the UI updates are going to continue. Uh, and you'll see sort of where that overarching theme is going. Uh, but I can give you the hint. It is all about getting you guys on top of the image, whether it's the rendered image or whether it's the viewport, really getting you closer to the image, making you ping pong less between tabs, letting you be more fluid with the work that you need to do. That's the sort of the driving mentality to it all. All right, so new viewer. Many of you have probably had a moment like this. <laughs> I've had those moments and I don't get to work on the big shows that you guys do. So it's been a long time coming. Thank you for your patience, uh, but we're really happy uh, to tell you that with Katana 3 will come the new viewer. It is based on the Hydra technology uh, built on top of our viewer API uh, that we introduced in Katana 2.6. Those two things together give you guys a really awesome viewer experience. Uh, to give you the sort of the cheat sheet, it's about seven to 10 times faster than the old viewer. So that's even before multi-threading, okay. So where we got through this is we spend a lot of time working with our UX designer and this is just a quick preview of some of his cheat sheets as he was going through and actually cataloging all the little elements of UI interaction that would lead to the proper UX. We looked at all the manipulation tools because let's be honest, the ones in 2.6 are functional but not elegant and you guys need elegant. You need something that allows you to massage the lights and the objects into the right positions. So one of my favorite ones you'll see uh, in a minute is this COI tool, which is what this uh, design documentation is for. Biggest request ever, I think, in the history of software at Foundry, can I please move more than one object at once? <laughs> it's, you'll see it in a second. All right, but when it comes to the manipulators, it was really something that I wanted to be, uh, make sure we did right. So we looked at the Moto working plane, um, it has some nice elements, but you know, lighting doesn't necessarily tumble around that way. So you, in the transform tools, you end up with obviously X, Y, Z controls. You then also have the plane controls. So you can move lights around in planes, which just makes things not really nice. You get these little preview lines. So if you're really trying to say, okay, I need to move that light in that axis towards where it intersects the wall, you kind of almost have like a laser pointer dot that's gonna show you where it is on, on there. So that's pretty cool. And like I gave away the piece de resistance, yes, you can move multiple objects. It is a life-changing experience in Katana. 
and thank you for bearing with us while we got there. So, and it works across both local and, and uh, or object and world space. So, yes, we're <laughs> flying ponies, gotta love it. And then, again, my favorite uh, of the manipulator, because I think this is actually going to really help you guys, uh, depending on you know, the lighting that you're doing. But the idea, like, all right, you know, moment of truth. Who here was really annoyed when you wanted to go through look at mode that you had to basically tap the you know, transform tool twice or the rotate tool twice, and you can never work it both at the same time? So that was the primary goal with our new look at tool was that if you wanted to manipulate lights and cameras around their COI, you should be able to do so, you know, in one uh, interaction, basically. Uh, you can work with multiple objects at the same time, so you could have multiple lights that are all having their, you know, you can sort of fine tune their, their look at. You can then move them all around uh, in one go. And so it's just a very nice, elegant way to work with lights and cameras. Okay, so there's a lot of things that we'll probably add to the Hydra Viewer over time. Uh, what we'll ship with initially is just screen space ambient occlusion, uh, just to make your more complex geometries a little bit easier to discern. It's pretty uh, interactive, so you can dial it in and out. Uh, it's not going to be the endpoint. It's just what we wanted, what we were comfortable putting in before we did uh, some work on QT. Performance-wise, like I said, seven to ten times more uh, performance. So this is basically a hospital CAD model that was converted over uh, using a parallel project to uh, Katana called Bunsen. And you'll see on the right-hand side is the new viewer. On the left-hand side is the one that you know and love so much and bear with. Uh, but 100,000 scene graph locations over uh, multi-million polygons. And you can see it's just flying onto the screen compared to the old viewer. And on top of uh, things actually drawing faster, you'll find Hydra really is more buttery smooth than um, the old OpenSync Graph viewer. So this video goes on for about another four minutes uh, for the old viewer to catch up. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. So let's talk a bit about where we're going to go with things. So this is uh, one of our design mockups that uh, the team did for us. And um, if we look up here, these are uh, an element that we didn't want to put in in a rush. So you'll see them here. We'll give you heads up uh, displays for the transform values on the tools that will, will update as you tumble. You'll be able to edit and enter numerical values. You'll be able to do the virtual slider work on them, all that kind of stuff. So again, it's this idea of, pull you, keep you on the image more often than not, try and reduce the amount of time that we pull you between tabs so that you, know, you can basically uh, spend more time uh, doing great things. This element at the top here uh, will be a scene graph uh, path selection bar. So if you want to alter your selection based on what you've picked and you want to work with a higher level of the hierarchy, you'll be able to interact with that bar. If there's multiple objects selected, they'll have a drop down, and then you'll be able to work your way through it. So these are some of the things that are coming up in the, uh, the next releases. Uh, Hydra is very capable of doing full PBR rendering. So uh, we'll get uh, the full PBR uh, pipeline all strung in nicely once we go to the QT5. And that is going to open up uh, a lot of options. What we'll find is where's the balance, and you'll see this uh, in a bit, uh, between how much do, do we do in GL and how much do we push into ray tracing. You'll uh, understand why. But <clears throat> looking at a large set, this is running off my little laptop, uh, multi-million polygon uh, city scene the hard way, but still lit with IBL, so it works. But it's not buttery smooth the way that we would want it. Hydra brings with it instancing technology. So what we're working on, uh, but didn't get to a state that we were 100% happy with before uh, locking off Katana 3, is that if you set up instance source, instance ID, or instance array workflows for your render engine, you will be able to then have that also drive uh, the display of those objects in the viewport. So you'll have instancing in your rendering, instancing in your viewport, and uh, generally just 
much more uh, feedback no matter what you're doing. Okay, so integrated rendering. I'm not going to steal uh, Aguilis' thunder, but I will say this. 3D light, which apparently doesn't work on the projector. That it's got the light underneath it. Um, <laughs> looks great on my screen. Uh, these guys have done a fantastic job, and you'll see from what uh, he'll show you uh, that it's a combination of the power, the speed, married with usability uh, that makes Katana you know, really approachable, and it's actually a key aspect of us getting Katana into schools. So to give you guys a highlight of uh, the kind of usability pieces that they've been working on, or features, so this is uh, called Multi-Light. He'll talk more about it. But essentially, it's a very quick way of creating uh, per-light AOVs, but using their 3D light display, you will be able to actually then pick the highlight of that light and then change its intensity up and down. Uh, that feeds back into the Gapper 3, okay? So the way I look at it is that we all have those colleagues that we work with or clients that we work with that they don't see through the graininess of a progressive render. So to have the opportunity to make a really, you know, polished 2K, 4K render that has all the light passes all spread out and sit there with the client and just dial it in uh, is phenomenal. All right, so this is the fun part. This is where I get to kind of go, guys, pedal faster. Uh, because I want to get to this stuff. So thank you for all of you that um, have bared with the shading nodes as they are. Uh, we are going to do a complete overhaul of the shading node uh, system. So to give you an idea, uh, full left to right workflow, typed inputs, uh, multiple collapsing. Uh, there's, this is like phase one, just redesign the UI so that uh, the nodes themselves are quicker to interact with. Phase two is actually overhauling the network material workflow, still keeping the attribute convention that powers it, uh, but giving you a group-based approach. So we can start looking at giving you access to shaders through live groups. Um, you can start making more modular units. And instead of having a node that then changes the whole uh, paradigm, whether you're actually authoring or editing, uh, you will be given a display that looks like the shading network that you set up. So anybody that has had to use the network material splice or the network material parameter edit and put up with that workflow, thank you for your patience. Relief is coming. Okay, so I might have to skip through this a bit, uh, but uh, one thing that we've, this is actually a prototype uh, running off of Katana 3. And uh, a lot of you have told us that in your pipelines, there's a lot of render procedurals, a lot of things that appear at render time. So being able to massage those or see those, visualize those, interact with them, there does become a point where how much is effort do you guys or do we put into powering that through GL? So in this case, we've got a few VDB uh, volumes. I'm just basically scattering the, bo the bounty boxes around a bit. But uh, traditionally, if you uh, had to get into precise art direction, it does get to be a bit of a, uh, a pain, frankly. It's, you know, I had one uh, client tell me exactly what it was like uh, to try and uh, art, work with an art director uh, placing clouds uh, sort of this way. And the relief of that is then you start looking at rendering engines like 3 Delight, which allow you to then, A, get really super fast VDB rendering, but then also allow you to make full edits to the transforms, the shading networks, the lighting, everything is all uh, editable. But if we skip forward, It was uh, a lot faster than when I was playing it back in my head. Uh, essentially, in the prototype, we've given uh, the first stab at actually putting the rendering directly into the viewport. This will be something that will be optional. It will be tied into the renderer working sets. So we'll give you depth-based compositing. You'll be able to mix GL and ray tracing. And uh, eventually, the idea is that Depending on what you're doing, if you don't need uh, the specific tools of the monitor, the monitor and, and the viewer can start to strongly overlap. Uh, and maybe one day they will be the same thing. And so this will probably come out in a couple uh, 
phases. The first one will be, you'll be able to see and interact with the GL objects, so you have to still select the scene graph locations. A future release, uh, I would see us actually transitioning to using uh, the, uh, adding normals and world space position to the API, using the ID buffers that we already generate, and giving you pixel-based selection and manipulation and interaction, including placement of lights by uh, just clicking on uh, positions on an image. So it's a, you know, the kind of future where I think things get very, uh, very interesting. And again, it's this, theory, it's this theme of get you on top of the image so you can do more just with what you have to interact with. Okay, so uh, I can go into this more, more in detail privately uh, or at various one-on-one uh, -on -one client meetings. So we did have a project called Bunsen. Uh, it did a lot of work uh, extracting technology from Moto to make some geometric tools. Uh, and we've decided to um, basically roll all that into one. So Katana will be able to adopt some geometry editing. We're talking making UVs, uh, fixing UVs, polydecimation, um, Booleans, you, you know, basic geometry fixes is what it comes down to. The end goal is to create the tool sets that basically when you reach that roadblock where you might have to go out to another tool to basically make you stay so that you don't have to leave. And if you've got that simulation mesh where you've got the character's cloth is, you know, crashed through the arm and if you could only pull a couple of points or a couple of faces, you could fix it and get on with your shot, you'll be able to do that in a procedural based way. Nuke Interop is all about just sending uh, pixels into Nuke and then being able to interact with it. And Mariop Interop would be about just having in buttons to basically make sure you can get things into Katana faster. So one last thing before uh, we kick off to the next person is that it's really important for you guys to know that we've heard you loud and clear about what it's like to actually find uh, staff. I mean, Montreal is fantastic. There's such a density of studios here. Uh, but on a global scale, we'll be pushing Katana 3 with 3 Delight into all the schools that have Nuke, Mari, whatever. And it'll be up to the school whether they want to teach a program with it, but we're going to be asking every school to make sure that they do have it installed so that if a student wants to really kind of pick it up because it's, you know, lighting and uh, rendering become their passion, uh, we want it there so they're ready for you when they get out. Yeah, so.